Awesome. So today we're doing art class <laughs> and we're going to be doing nature painting. So naturalist inspired by the naturalist Maria Marian. Uh, naturalist painting was a style used uh, before we had photographs to illustrate scientific journals and books and dictionaries and all that fun stuff. So the objective in this is to paint whatever you have as accurately as possible. So we're gonna go through a list of the um, materials real quick and then we'll get started. So you're probably gonna want a couple of paintbrushes. Uh, just get a couple of different sizes so that uh, you have all the different tips you need to make different things. Uh, you're gonna want some watercolor paints, a black pen, water, and you're gonna want a plant. This is also a great opportunity to get outside for a little bit since a lot of people have plants outside. You can even do black grass, uh, animals, you can paint your dog, anything you have at home. Suzanne, I have a question. Yes. If people don't have a plant at home, could they do the same project with a picture of a plant? Yes, you definitely could. Uh, it is just as good. It's just, if you have a plant, it's really fun to try to do it from what you're seeing in real life. Excellent question. So, with that, I guess we'll go ahead and get started. So, what you're going to do first is decide where you're going to start on your pit, your plant. I couldn't think of the right word. And so I'm going to work on this section here where the bud is starting to go out, and we'll start focused on that bud. I'm going to start with one of the round brushes because that's good for smaller details. And then we'll just get going. light color in the center here. We're going to mix some of our lighter green. Um, most plant uh, palettes you'll have with uh, watercolors will have a couple different varieties, but you can always mix them together to make different colors. So I need a lighter green since it's so light here. So we're going to mix the light green with the yellow. And then we'll get going. So you hit the bud like this. Now first we'll just do the basic shapes and then add shadows later. And if you have any questions while you're working on this, you can go ahead and call us. We're still answering phones at the library even if you can't come in to do it. <laughs> the number you'll want to call is 956 Two one six five eight one nine. And just ask for the children's department because no one else really know what you're talking about. <laughs> Suzanne, I have another question. Yes. Um, some of our friends are stuck at home, not going to the store. If they don't have watercolors already at home, but they have other kinds of paint, can they do a project with different kinds of paint and get yes. something similar? You can definitely do it with different paints. You can also do it with crayon. It sounds a little weird. Some of the things you're gonna to have to tweak a little bit to do it with crayons, but you can go ahead and do that if you don't have the ability to go to the store and get paints right now. I know not everyone has any sort of paints at home, so definitely adapt it however you want. I am gonna try and get some of the yellow leaves in. If there's something in your painting that you want to fit in, but it isn't necessarily next to the part you're working on, it's okay to cheat and add in, like these yellow flowers here are not in the part I'm working on, but they look really cool. So I'm going to go ahead and add those anyway, since I like them. And no one but you will really ever know that you switched it. So this one is cool because it has the yellow outline with the green on the inside. We'll just do the yellow, we'll leave the space in, and you can go back with the green. Do it down the center and then the sides like this. And then you can add different shadows and shades and everything in different parts.
ahead and step away for a little bit because it has to dry before we can move on to the next step. So you can also like wave at it with paper or something to try to get it to dry faster. <laughs> Um, Susanna, while we're waiting for it yep. to dry, I don't know if this is a good idea. Maybe you could get another paper out and show people some different, like, brush strokes that make different kinds of looks. Yeah, we can do that. Sure. So we have a couple different brushes while we're waiting for the painting to dry that I guess I'll show you how to make some for them. So this one is a flat brush. The flat brush comes in all kinds of sizes. Uh, for what you're doing now, you're probably going to stick to some of the smaller size unless you have a really big piece of paper. There it is up close, folks. So with this one, I'm just going to use purple since we never use it. You can make either really wide, broad lines like this. And so that's good for covering up a lot of space at once. Or, also, these ones are really good for making really fine lines. So hold it all the way straight up instead of sideways like this. So hold it straight up and go like that. Or, <laughs> lots of options. You can kind of combine the two and do more of a calligraphy stroke. So it makes kind of a ribbon shape when you do that. Um, let's see. With the, pretty sure these are called rounded tip ones. Rounded tip. You, these are good for pretty much like writing. So you just treat it like you would a pencil. So draw like this. These ones are really good if you want to make really small lines. You just make little quick motions and don't press too hard. If you press a little harder, you'll get heavier lines. And then also if you want to get really tiny lines, your temptation is to use a very little paint on your brush, but it's actually a lot better if you fill your brush with paint to make fine lines, because then it gathers at the end, and you can make really tiny lines that are really dark colored. So, there's a couple of those. Um, Susanna, can we see that brush up close? Oh, yeah, sorry about that. And there's also a lot of different sizes of that one, so there's a lot of choices you can make. See what the others. Uh, if you have a fan brush, those are really good for making flower petals but we don't have one of those. So. If you have one, you probably know how to use it. <laughs> Let's see if I have any other special ones. No, these are all pretty much the same in the different sizes. I like using the tiniest ones if I have small details. If you have to like write something, you can just do, uh, it's like having a pencil. Those are all the kinds of brushes. If you have other kinds, you probably know how to use them, or you can go ahead and YouTube how to use them. I just don't have a ton of examples with me right now. I normally stick to two or three brushes because they can do pretty much everything you're going to have to do. All right, so it looks like the top of the painting is pretty much dry enough to start doing the drawing part. So this is where you're going to use your black pen. Uh, I like doing this to add detail and to make the colors really pop. So you're going to choose your starting point and just work from there. I like to outline where there's larger color variations, so like here, or if it's something that you want to define as a separate part. So all the little different branches and stuff you're going to do separately. So this can be used to make the lines on the bud that make it look like it's getting ready to open. And then if you go back in on your leaves, you can use pretty much any pen for this. I like uh, matte colored pens because they're not shiny once you finish your painting. So you can just go in and do all the little, however many or as few as you want to do, and then find all the little spots with a lot of color variation. Go ahead and be there. Now, Susanna, what would happen if somebody got started on this pen part before their painting was dry enough? 
your pen would probably bleed into the ink of the or the paint so it would just be a little more smudgy uh, if that's a look you're going for it's actually kind of cool to see how the pen different pens react differently so if you have a gel pen it would probably smudge more than if you had a ballpoint first video we've ever actually done doing this so hopefully in the future we'll get better at it <laughs> uh, have a great day